In this video, we're going to take a brief look at loops. And there are two main kinds of loops. There's a for loop and a while loop. For loops are generally used when you know exactly how many times you, you want to repeat a task. And while loops usually are used when you're not quite sure. Uh, so let's look at for loops first, since they're in many ways the easier one. So again, as we said, uh, for loops are used when you want to repeat something a certain number of times. And the basic structure is for and then some sort of variable, I'll call it number, in, and then you're going to give it a range. And the way you put a range is three dots. So I have for number in one through five. Whatever code I put between the curly braces is repeated that many of times. So just to see how this works, let's actually just print out uh, the current number is, and then I'll write number. All right, let's see how that looks. When I run it, and you can see down here in the console, the current number is one, so it starts with one, and it goes all the way through to five. So these numbers are inclusive. So when I write one through five, it is going to include those numbers. So that's a very simple kind of for loop. Uh, there are times when you might not need the number, you just want to do something a certain number of times. And in those cases, you can eliminate this variable with and just replace it with an underscore. So I could say for in, let's say, 1 to 10, I can just say print, hello there. And then when I run that command, it just prints hello there 10 times. Again, I would use this syntax if I did not need the numbers. I just wanted to repeat something a certain number of times. It is possible to use a for loop to iterate over pieces of an array. So again, I left these classes and dictionary from, from last time. So if I want to iterate over an array, I can say for subject in classes. This is sometimes called a for in loop. And again, this variable doesn't necessarily matter what it is, but I like to keep it relevant to what I'm iterating over or looping over. So I'm going to print, I take, and then subject. So I'm using this variable as a placeholder. It's gonna go through each element of my array. So when I run this, it says I take English, I take biology, and I take history. And you can see those are the classes in order in my classes array. I can also iterate over a dictionary, um, but this one's a little bit different because remember dictionaries have key value pairs. So instead of just putting a single variable, I need to create what is called a tuple, which is uh, two variables enclosed in parentheses. So I can say for year, comma, movie in pictures. And I can say print the best picture in, and then I'll put the year. was, and then the movie. So again, I'm using year and movie to represent this key and this value, and I'll print out those values in my string here. Let's go ahead and run that. And then you'll notice the best picture in 2019, 16, 18, 17. And again, you notice the order is changed. When you have a dictionary, there is no guarantee that the order that you input will be the order that is printed. Because as we said before, the order does not matter. So that's a quick look at for loops. Uh, we can do things a certain number of times or iterate over a uh, array or dictionary. The other type of loop is a while loop. And in a while loop, you give it a condition and the loop will repeat as long as that condition is true. 
So I have a, I'll have i just do a very simple example. I'll create a um, total equals 5. And I'll say while total is greater than 0, I'll print the total is And then let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. And you can see my loop is running thousands of times. And what's happening is I'm getting caught up in what's called an infinite loop. I never had an exit condition in my while loop. So there's no way this total is never going to get below zero. So what I need to do is... I need to decrease my total each time. Let's go ahead and run it again before it gets out of control. So I actually had to close and reopen Xcode. I crashed the program because of that infinite loop. So the lesson we learned here is you need to always make sure you have an escape condition uh, or a way for this to become false so that this loop will exit. Otherwise, you will crash Xcode. So now that I've added this total minus equals 1, let's run this again. And you can see it counts down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Once it gets down below 1, so to 0, 0 does not, is not greater than 0 anymore. So this loop exits. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is that you can use a break command to exit a loop. So I can say if total is less than 2, break. So this is just a quick if statement to see if the total gets down below 2, break out of the loop. Let's run that. And once it gets down 5, 4, 3, 2, once it gets less than 2, it breaks out of the loop and doesn't print again. So this was a very, very quick look at loops. Hopefully this was a review for you. Up next, we will do something new within Xcode. We'll take a look at using auto layout and stack views to make sure your apps look similar on varying screen sizes.